Um, what supplements do you take slash recommend for women trying to grow muscle? Great question. So within this one, I think that this is a very, very important thing to drive home is that most women and, and most men as well are really just needing to eat in a caloric surplus for an extended period of time. And an extended period of time is not three months. It's not six months. It's not nine months. It could be two years. You need to eat in a caloric surplus and train really hard. And I mean, really train and progress your lifts and get better at the execution of your lifts and all these different factors. Those two things alone and prioritizing your sleep are all going to be much more beneficial than any supplement that you would be taking um, within the achieving the muscle growth that you're wanting to create. And uh, that's uh, too much work. Though. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And I know that a lot of you from a competitor standpoint, see these pros at the top level and they're ending their season in the middle of the year. And then they've got the Olympia at the end of the year. And then you see them posting of like three months off season, <laughs> like three month improvement season. I'm Jack. Now I've put on like three inches to my glutes. It's that's not a thing. And, 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 and even then, if it was a thing, they're on a different level than you are at the amateur level. That I mean, that's their whole life. That's every aspect, not to say it's their whole life and they don't have anything else going on, but it's the fact of like, that's their number one priority. So if you listen to two podcasts ago, which is us recapping my first show of the season and how that all went, it comes from the fact of like, when we look at priorities and Alex and I were talking about this last night, actually, of if you're not doing absolutely everything, you can't expect to have those same results. So I know that people that are complaining about not building muscle are definitely not taking the gym and training and recovery as seriously and as consistent and diligently as those Olympians. By 0% chance are any of those people that are complaining about muscle having that diligence to their fitness. And it's okay if you don't have that diligence. By no means am I saying that if you don't have that diligence, you're not fit, you're not into fitness, you're not as important as those people. It's just saying you have to understand where priorities are and what you're putting into it in order to get out of it. Right. And the what brought it up last night is that I was telling Sue that when I get upset that maybe I'm having like a breakout or something along those lines on like my skin, I I see how good she does a, a job of, of taking care of her skin and the work that she puts in and the frequency of just like all the things that she applies and those different <laughs> factors. She does such a good job. And so then I'm like, okay, I love how her skin looks and I'd love for my skin to look that way, but am I putting in the same effort and uh, doing the same amount of things to make my skin look that way? No. So then I'm like, I'm not that upset. It's just like, I, I know what I need to do and I'm not doing it. Thus, I can't really be upset. Yeah. And then you also talked about it within like training and food as well yeah. of like, I've been very, very on top of my food and training. Obviously I'm in prep, but just in general, I do have that work ethic of the this past six years, I've been extremely diligent within food and within and training. And I even had to have a conversation like mentally to prepare myself of since this is likely my last season competing, I have to realize I'm likely not going to have the exact same diligence and focus as I have the past six years. And therefore, I cannot expect the same results to follow moving forward because I'm not putting in that effort to match that expectation, which is something we talk about a lot with clients as well. And then we have conversations of it, of what it looks like for what your expectation is versus what effort you're putting in. And if you've put it down on paper and you might need to see, oh, I either need to raise my freaking effort, which is probably the answer, or I need to lower my expectations of what's going to happen due to the effort that I'm putting into this. So I can't expect my TikTok to grow to a bajillion followers if I'm not putting any effort into it. So I either need to change my expectation of what I want to happen or what I expect to happen versus, or I need to change what effort I I'm putting in for that to happen as a result. Yeah. And the aspect of wishing for like 
Sue using the TikTok, like that is a very comfortable thought of like, well, you know, one thing's going to happen and I'm going to post something that's viral and then my page is going to be massive and everyone's going to trust me. And it's like not a big deal. And it's like super like you can just lean back and say that. And the uncomfortable thing is like putting in effort and, and making posts and like posts not going well and then posts doing well and like trying to get yourself out there and like all those different things. That's the uncomfortable part. And people want to run away from what's uncomfortable. It's, it's human nature. Nature. But as you have more things in your life that you present in an uncomfortable way and you trudge through that uncomfortable level and those different aspects and you see the result that comes out of it, then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, a light bulb goes off. And now you're in a position where it's like, I am seeking to just chronically be uncomfortable because I understand the growth that comes with it. No matter the adversity that I start with, I'm going to work through the adversity and get to a, a greater place, or I'm going to get to the next level, whatever that may be. And that's the, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. And that's hard. I mean, that's, that's hard. very hard. And we struggle with that. Again, I said it in the last episode, but like we're not coming from a place of we have it all figured out or we do it all perfectly. We most definitely do not. We're human beings, but we are constantly trying to learn and evolve and have conversations to reflect on where we can be better and where we can look at, hey, am I pushing into my comfort zone? Because that conversation last night stemmed into where our comfort zones are and like what we need to do to get to where we want to by putting in that effort. Like we still have to have those conversations with each other of saying, oh, I'm not in this place yet. Well, have you pushed out of your comfort zone recently? Have you applied stress in that situation? Have you put yourself in a harder situation? Have you gotten more reps in? Because with him talking about skincare, I was like, oh, that's so funny because I'm the same way within programming. If I view like, and people's perception of how they view intelligence is all different. But intelligence, like br brute intelligence, Alex has a shit ton of it. And I view that as so much more successful than a lot of the other skills I have, even though that's something where each skill is measured on a different playing field, all of that. But I was always down on myself if I'm not as good as programming of Alex and I'm not X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh my gosh, he writes training programs all the time. He spends all the free time he can studying and learning more about the human body and doing X, Y, and Z to improve on that thing. Like, how can I expect me to be on the same level by not putting in the same amount of time or effort? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Not to say that I don't put yeah, in effort, yeah, yeah. but again, I, my skill set is at. stretched into a different direction for what the needs are for PD. I want to make that clear. It's not, please, clients know I put a lot of effort <laughs> into it. It's just talking about those different levels. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that led us last night into a conversation speaking to um, being reflective of the different levels that you were at previously and realizing that all the time you're in this state of like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm trying to figure it out. And so you're just chronically in that state, especially as you're trying to progress. And, and it's an easy analogy within physique development where we're, we're trying to grow the business as a whole. And so it's in a, a chronic state of like, we are just every day waking up and figuring it out. We're, we're, put, we're throwing things against the wall. We're doing what we feel is, is best and seeing what works and what doesn't work and then taking that data and then adjusting. And that's, that's life in general. But it's funny because last night we were like uh, talking about going back to when it was just like very simple. Mm -hmm. it's very, it was just coaching. It was just uh, working with, with clients one-on-one -on -one, and it was much, much smaller. And it was something where it's like oh, going back to that seems so relaxing. And it, the reality is, is that at that time, I felt the same way that I do now of like, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. I'm trying to keep the boat floating and trying to figure out what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And But when you're reflecting, it's like, oh, that was easy. Like that that stage of life, so easy. Can't even, can't even fathom how easy that was, I, you know? And so um, that's something important of like, it wasn't as easy as you're making it out to be, you know, almost 10 years later, like yeah. at the time, it was probably <laughs> just as difficult as this level in, in life is as well. And we're even like re reflecting and re 
imagining that because, again, within our staff of looking at where some of the coaches are and there where we were multiple years ago. And to me, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's so easy. Just do this. And then I'm like, Sue, it wasn't easy. When you were in it, it was hard. And even if you were doing all of the things, it still took time. And I have to remember that not only as a boss, but also as someone who wants them to progress of I need to see what steps to help them with and how to show them what this looks like as they move forward instead of just telling them it's easy because that's not helpful to hear right. of like, hey, that's easy. Just get past it. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah. There is a process of it. Yeah, there's been a lot of places of growth this year, but the level of empathy and patience that we've been able to build, I think, has been the um, probably the strongest. Yeah. Like, that, I mean, that instance in, in, in and of itself has been one of the biggest like learning lessons for us. Yeah. Yeah. I very much so agree. 